Hello and welcome back. As promised in my last video, we will be discussing the average shield strength of Covenant ships in the Halo universe, as well as how I was able to piece together this info. So let's get started. Um, in my last video about Mac cannons, we learned that a CCS battlecruiser has a shield rated to withstand roughly 14 gigatons of damage. Sadly, this is where our journey would have ended if not for some short-lived but truly amazing lore. I'm referring to the Halo Fleet Battles tabletop game. Now yes, this is a game and it was meant to be fun and relatively balanced, as well as not 100% lore accurate, but there's still plenty we can glean and infer from this. In fact, after laying it all out, I was surprised to find that it's probably more accurate to the lore than most would think. Certainly more accurate than I would have thought, after looking at everything in a nice flat sheet. The Covenant ships in the uh, game have something called a Defense Array Rating. This is just uh, represented by a simple number like 4, 6, or 8. But if we look at the ships they are attached to, the, the defense array rating that is, and how many ships are in a single element, as well as look at those total numbers more like ratios than random meaningless numbers, then we're able to string them together and look at the rest of the Covenant fleet and get an idea of the rough naval strength of each individual ship. Again, remember to divide the size of an element. There are some cases where corvettes or something has the uh, same shield rating as a cruiser, but there are five total corvettes in that group versus one cruiser. But don't worry, I've already done all the math and confusing string stuff and logic, so as always, notes on this will be in the video's description. A couple things before we start, and I just throw out the numbers, let me give you a little bit of history on the ships. After much digging, I have found the shield strength of Covenant ships has almost no correlation to the ship's size. Sure, with an increased size comes larger reactors, and one would logically assume that the ship would need larger reactors to be able to maintain the same level of defense power over a now vastly increased surface area, but having almost no increase in almost all cases surprised me. Keep in mind though, I said almost all cases. Um, rather, it seems that many of their ships are of very, very old designs and have served long before the Human Covenant War, uh, 500 plus years old in, in some, if not many, cases and were periodically upgraded from time to time. Also, yes, many of their ships are capable of being very effective in combat despite their age, e even if they're not directly designed for it, such as the case of the CSO, CAS, DCS, as well as a few others. You gotta remember, the UNSC is barely a Tier 3 civilization, whereas the Covenant have been leeching technology from foreigners and have propelled themselves to some sort of like a quasi-Tier 2.5 civilization. I know the lore has them listed as a Tier 2, but like, think about it for a second. These are basically religious space archaeologists. They're, 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 that's what they are. They're a cult of space archaeologists. If they were a true Tier 2 civilization, they would have many, many, many members and worlds and factories dedicated to produ producing weapons of war. They would actually know how to efficiently wield them and take full advantage of the stuff they have. But in their culture, learning is forbidden, and if you discover, and I'm, I'm quoting here, doing air quotes, I know you can't see it, if you discover the secrets of the gods, you're a dirty heretic and should be beheaded. That is not for someone of your low status to know. Only the prophets and very select uh, equipment makers may know this. <sighs> anyway, I'm getting off topic. Going back to the shields. Um, obviously their shields do not scale like one would assume at a passing glance. Almost paradoxically, there are also cases where the inverse is true, and smaller ships have much, much more powerful shields than one would assume for its size. An example would be the little CRS light cruiser, which has a massive shield strength to size ratio, and the ADP Escort, which is just over half the size of an SDV Corvette, but has shields stronger than the SDV. I suspected something very similar to this might be the case for a very long time, and it's nice to have it explained in lore and have it come out and be proven right, even if I did have to wait t uh, 10 to 12 years for it. Also keep in mind though, these numbers are merely to drop shields. Actually killing the ships is far more nuanced, and some ships have armor so thick that most standard deck cannons the UNSC uses, as well as archer missiles, are completely useless. Others are simply so freaking massive that even without the shields they would take an insane amount of force or multiple max shots to take out. Again, I would equate this to trying to hunt an elephant with a BB gun. If, say, for example, you're using a frigate and you're trying to take down a, uh, even just a CAS, even just an assault carrier, <laughs> you're, it's not going to happen. You need to mack it, and you need a lot of your frigate buddies to mack it. 
But enough on the backstory. Let me get into the shield strength from ship class to ship class. This is going to be going up from smallest ship size in terms of meters to largest. The CIRS class light cruiser can take 4.5 gigatons worth of damage to its shields. That's pretty impressive for that tough little ship considering that it's smaller than a UNSC frigate. The DAV light corvette ironically has no shields, but it is a special stealth and ECM vessel. One of these ships, at least on one occasion, was capable of hacking into or disrupting the guidance of an entire swarm of Archer missiles from a UNSC fleet and sending them swirling off into space harmlessly where they detonated. The UNSC had to resort to Mac cannons, ramming, and other close-range tactics to try and deal with this which is not something you really want to do against the Covenant. Like getting close to them is suicide. In many cases, staying far away from them is suicide too, but that's beside the point. Um, the ADP Escort is 2.33 gigatons for its shield strength. The CAR Frigate, which we have only seen um, a couple times, or rather, we, we actually we haven't even seen it. We've only heard about it a few times. And the CAR might not even be the proper designation for this. This is just something that was in a, uh, in, in a mod. Now, as far as the car goes, this is a very old ship in the Covenant fleet. Both its shielding and weapons are not very impressive compared to other ships in the Covenant Navy. A UNSC frigate can penetrate the shields and damage the ship with one shot of its mech. Though, it is still dangerous and has at least one plasma torpedo silo, oh, four pulse lasers, and four heavy plasma cannons. Further armaments are unknown, and again, we're not even sure if this this is the same type of frigate that's been mentioned in the lore. I mean, there, there could be multiple frigate classes. We don't know. Um, but for now, I'm just going to call it the CAR class frigate because it's in a number of fan-made Halo games. They do have a frigate, but again, we don't have the the three-letter designation for it, and we don't know if all of the frigates that are being referenced in the lore are the same class, so we'll just kind of assume that they are for now until told otherwise. Um, moving on, we have the SDV Heavy Corvette. Again, one Mac round can get through it. It has a two gigaton rated shield. Um, probably won't destroy the ship, but will likely take the nose off of it. And then Archer missiles and secondary weapons can help mop that thing up. The only reason we didn't see this in the Halo Reach game is, well, actually, there's two reasons. One, the Halo Reach game, total crap, didn't happen. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people love the game. I don't know why. I read the original book a million times better, both in terms of story, lore writing, battle, everything. The second reason is, even if you are going after the game, their goal was never to destroy the ship. Their, their goal was to board it. So if they fired on it with the main gun and destroyed it, there goes your only chance of getting the slip space drive over there to the CSO to cut it in half. So that's why they didn't just blap it with a frigate's mac. Um, again, trying not to get distracted, let me just continue. You now have the DCS support ship right above that. If you don't know what any of these ships are, by the way, you can just go ahead and look them up by their three-letter designation. Um, that one is a botanical and I guess uh, food supply ship for the Covenant fleet. That's yeah, that's about what you would call it. After that, you've got the CPV heavy destroyer. Both the DCS and CPV have a 10.5 gigaton shield rating. Uh, after those, you have the CCS battle cruiser, which everyone should know, 14 gigatons. After that, you have the larger but older RCS armored cruiser at 7 gigatons. Again, this is an older design with armor too thick to be effectively harmed by archers, um, hence its really low shield rating, despite being larger than a CCS. But shields aren't everything, apparently, even for the Covenant, and that's why, even though it's weaker in terms of shield strength, it's kind of an oddity and can withstand archers with the shields down. Not many Covenant ships can do that. Um, after the CRS Armored Cruiser, you have the Covenant Super Destroyer or Battleship at an estimated 24 gigatons. Now, I recognize Super Destroyer and or Battleship are wildly different terms, and the reason for this, this is another one of those oddities. We, we see this ship a couple times in lore, but we don't actually know what its three-letter designation is. Um, the first time you see this is in the Halo Wars Genesis comic. Uh, it took an entire fleet of ships from 2525 or 2526, I believe it was, to bring this one ship down. 
and it was kicking the crap out of the UNSC until they literally fired everything, J.J. Abrams Star Trek style at the thing, and that was just enough to take down its shields and knock it out. And thankfully there was only one of these things, completely unsupported, otherwise this would have been really bad for us to run into. The second time we saw this was... Actually, I, you know, I don't even remember off the top of my head the second time we saw this, and I don't have all of the info in front of me. Uh, I was just trying to make a short video today, so we'll just s skip that and move on. I'm sorry. The, the next ship is the DDS-class carrier. Again, this is a very old Covenant ship design that predates the CAS, which is the standard assault carrier, and features abnormally thick armor. Uh, this one has a 15 gigaton shield rating, and again, Archer missiles are completely worthless against this. Um, after this, uh, we have a very large ORS heavy cruiser. This thing, again, only has a 14 gigaton shield, which is the same as the CCS. It's a bit of an older design. It's not as old as some of the other ones, which could almost be considered ancient, being 500 to 1,000 years old. However, this one has some other fancy tech in it. It has a cloak built into it and is able to project a massive amount of conventional firepower. Really, it's not that much weaker than a CCS. Uh, we don't really know how good the armor is on it, but it's safe to say taking one down with just missiles is going to be a problem. After this one, you have the DOS Super Cruiser. This one is estimated with a shield rating of 28 to 30 gigatons. It also has super thick armor that is immune to archers. The DOS supercruiser was seen in the original Fall of Reach book. This is the weird thick looking cruiser that the uh, Covenant had that was sitting 100,000 kilometers outside of the engagement zone and sniping ships with plasma beams. Uh, this is a very rare oddity in the Covenant Navy. It is, I mean, they, they have an entire ship built around this sniper purpose. Not all Covenant ships are capable of projecting their weapons to such an extreme range. And this thing was actually outranging even the orbital defense platforms as well as taking out uh, UNSC ki uh, light carriers and, and fleet ships before uh, Pillar of Autumn charged in there and managed to knock it out with six Mac rounds and that's right six Mac rounds and almost a thousand archer missiles by the time it was all said and done uh, after that we get into the last two covenant ships the CAS and CSO assault carrier now these things are a little bit more interesting and kind of break the standard convention of a generic all-in-one shield so the CAS and CSO are both broken up into three heavily shielded sections now all Covenant ships need to drop their shields, or at the very least, iris them, which means open up a section of them, to allow you to fire out their weapons, otherwise their weapons would hit their own shields and they would deplete them. In the best case scenario, worst case scenario, they could actually destroy their own ship by turning it into a plasma pressure cooker. The CAS Assault Carrier has a forward shield section of 28 gigatons, with a 31.5 gigaton central section and a 28 gigaton aft section. This ship is a bit of an oddity for another reason. Uh, it's not that it has armor that is too th thick for archers to be useful, uh, it's actually that it is too large and has too much surface area and mass and volume for archers to be effectively useful for anything other than taking out surface targets like weapon batteries, engines, etc. Um, the CSO supercarrier is another one that has a similar issue when trying to be destroyed by the UNSC, though since it's almost five times the size of the assault carrier, obviously much, much nastier. Uh, speaking of the supercarrier, the CSO has a 101.2 gigaton forward and aft section with a 113.9 gigaton central section. Uh, again, like I said, the ship is too large to be taken out by uh, archers and they're not really useful for anything other than trying to defang the ship. That's almost everything for now. I want to try and keep this video as short as possible, unlike the last one. And editing is already going to be a super pain because I made a lot of grammar mistakes. So I will let you all go. The next video that I do is going to be on Archer missiles and nukes. Oh, and I guess I'll also have the Howler missiles in there too, which are the Archer missiles replacement. Um, there are some that we just don't have enough info on to piece together and figure out how strong they are. But uh, the missile and nukes one may actually be two videos because they're pretty complex and have a lot of nuanced stuff to, to go over. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.